In this problem, we're given several radical functions. We're asked to find their domain and write our answer in interval notation and to find both the horizontal and vertical intercepts. So just to give you the short answer to how to find the domain without actually graphing in the calculator or anything fancy, suffice it to say, to help find the domain, you start by finding the horizontal intercept. So to find the horizontal intercept, what you do is first identify that if you are on a point on the horizontal axis, that's what a horizontal intercept is, where the graph crosses the horizontal axis, then that means that your output is zero. So what I need to do is I need to find a point that has the output, don't know the input, that's what I'm trying to find, has an output of zero. So in the actual equation, what you would do is you would replace the output notation f of x with zero and you would solve. So hopefully at this point you learned that the inverse of a square root is to square something. So I'm going to square the left hand side and then I'm going to take the right hand side and because it was square root uh, I'm going to square it. Had it been a third root then it would, I'd cube it. So whatever the root is, if it was the nth root you'd raise it to the nth power. So this is a square root. In fact if you wanted you could put a little two here to indicate that the index is a two. Uh, so to undo a square root, you square it. So it's going to happen is on the left-hand side, I get 0 squared, which is 0 times 0, which is 0. On the right-hand side, as I said, a square root function and a squaring function are inverses of each other. So they undo one another, leaving me with x minus uh, 9. Didn't leave myself much room uh, to, to write. Uh, so I'm just going to copy it over here. That's a horrible x anyway. We have x minus 9 equals 0. So if you added the 9 over, you would have x equals 9. So where I didn't have the x value here before, I now know that 9 is, uh, or in fact 9 comma 0, is the ordered pair that represents the horizontal intercept. In fact, I'm going to write that in right now. I'm going to click on this field and type in 9 comma 0, right parenthesis. Now, the, the short end of this, because I'm trying to keep the video short, is that in, this, in these problems, it looks like we've simplified things down so that the radicand, and by the way, the radicand is uh, the expression under the radical, the radicand is always linear. And if that's the case, you can tell that the graph is always going to do one of two things. The graph is either going to start at that horizontal intercept and go to the right forever, and that has implications of the domain, or the other case is that the graph is going to go to the left forever, which has implications on the domain. So the easy way to find out would be a graph it on your calculator. Um, perhaps I'll do that in a separate video. But if you want sort of a way just to look at it, since these are all linear radicands, is just to look at the slope on that line. So if you forgot about the radical, this would just simply be x minus 9. And, uh, and x minus 9 uh, is a linear expression with a uh, slope of 1. So it doesn't really matter if the slope is 1. The important thing is that it's positive. So if your slope is positive, and I just know what's going to happen, and if you don't believe me, graph this on your calculator, what's going to happen is that the graph is going to go uh, up and to the right forever, and that helps me find the domain. So I can actually answer the question vertical intercept right now. The fact that it starts here and goes to the right forever means it's never going to cross the vertical axis. If it's never going to cross the vertical axis, then there's never going to be a vertical intercept. So the directions are, if there is no intercept, write D and E for does not exist. And I'm not sure that's case sensitive, so I'm just going to play along and, and capitalize that. Uh, so the thing left now is the domain. So the domain, just by looking at this, would be that my x value start at 9 and include 9 and go to the right forever. So in interval notation, uh, interval notation... Uh, it always looks uh, as follows. So having a little bit of trouble with the uh, technology. Um, so to write something in interval uh, notation, you don't use any less than or greater than symbols. So that would be inequality notation. So to write something in interval uh, notation, uh, the convention is to always write your smallest number first, which would be 9. That's the furthest that the left gra the graph goes, comma, your biggest number. Well, there's no limit to how big my, uh, my x values are. The graph goes to the right forever. So if I was to trace to the right forever and look at the x values of my points, my x values just start at 9 and get bigger and bigger and bigger and never end. So it actually goes to the right forever, which we call positive infinity. Now, the convention is to do the following. Since x actually can be 9, meaning that it gives me a valid output, 
When you plug in 9, you actually get a real number output. In fact, you get 0. Uh, so since 9 is included in the domain, it yields a, it's an input that yields a valid y value, meaning it's a real uh, number. We use a bracket to say that the 9 is included in the domain. Uh, but you'll never see a bracket with infinity, you always see a parenthesis, because a parenthesis indicates that, you, that doesn't actually, domain actually doesn't include that number, which you can't reach infinity. Uh, it's not a real number. So with infinity, you always put a parenthesis there. So to write that in, I'm going to click here in this field and write bracket, left bracket, which is just to the right of the P on the keyboard, and type in 9, comma, and then the way to write infinity on this is either to use MathQuill, but I think it's easy enough just because this is a, uh, a video showing you. Just use OO, like little two lowercase O's, and your computer will, uh, MathAS will translate that into infinity. So I need to write parentheses, and just to prove to you that this is correct notation for MathAS, I click Preview, and there it is. You can see that the double O, don't use zeros, two lowercase O's, no spaces, gets translated into an infinity symbol on MathAS.